Crafts and Coffee with Chris and Kel. I'm Chris. And I'm Kel. And Nova's here. You're going to hear her in the background. Anyway, well, soft toys. If you didn't watch our last whip and chat, we introduced Nova to you. So um, we'll go ahead and put a picture or two up here so you can see what she looks like. She is a proud, Kel is a proud mommy. Oh, man. And I did not want a dog. I was so resistant for the longest. And it's incredible how much I love her in such a That's short so period cute. of time. Good. It's like, but it's the kind of love that kind of scares you because it's like, oh, she's not going to be around forever and my heart's going to break. You but... love her more than a, the cats? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well, well, because there's a certain closeness. Like, it's I feel different, like the huh? cats use me. Like, yeah, especially Mac. He's very needy and yeah. he doesn't, he will wait. The thing about Mac is he does not care. He will wake me up in the middle of the night, so I will pet him. And yeah. I'm like, dude, please. Right. <laughs> like, you know, and it it, it just seems like a, a one-way street, even though I know, you know, yeah. if you have a cat, you have like a lower blood pressure, or they say, you know, uh -huh. but lower yeah. chance of stroke Dogs or something. Dogs can give you high blood pressure. Oh, yeah. Because they're like children, man. Well, and I, I mean... I have to learn how to train her because she pulls, oh my gosh, she's so strong and she pulls and yeah. I already have arm and hand issues. Yeah, you do. Have to I mean, her. I have to be very careful that she doesn't freaking tear something in me. Look, she's trying to tear it open. It's okay. Okay. It's, it's fine. All right. My dogs don't, do not play with their toys. Rue used to. That's mm -hmm. why I have these toys. But since she's been gone, they just sit there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, anywho, what are you working on? I'm working on Tea Party by Simona Candini. <laughs> I, I, I have problems, y'all. I have problems, I can't speak, I, I have issues. Anyway, uh, I love this. It's so much fun, and of course we're doing it for, go ahead, you tell them. Hashtag blinging in the new year 2023, is that... Yes, uh -huh. and then hashtag uh, Alice in a Winter Wonderland. And then the other one is a uh, hashtag um, ticket to ride. Ticket to ride. There 23 you go. 23 or 2023. I'm not sure. By the time people are watching this, they'll be over. They'll be over. Yeah. So don't worry about the hashtags. But um, yeah, this is my this is my third year and participating in Alice in a Winter Wonderland, and it's the third event so and it's my first <laughs> yeah but i mean i think it's just cool that that's yeah. how i believe i initially met life with Lindsay. Uh -huh. um and so it's kind of cool that i've just kind of yeah it's it's actually a big priority for me just to participate at least in this event because yeah. i don't know i just want to support her and yeah <laughs> you know but definitely Anyway, gotta support our girl, Lindsay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anyway, anyway, <clears throat> please have patience with us during this time. <laughs> we have a lot going on. We haven't been able to film. As we said last episode, our mom has been in the hospital for almost four weeks, so we've had a lot going on. And Kel has had a lot going on in her at her home. And I will let her discuss that now. <laughs> I'm gonna hand it off to Kel now. Thanks. Is this the Kel <laughs> show? Finally. It's gonna be the Kel show right now. No, I don't want it. Um, okay, so uh um actually the exact pretty much around the exact time that mom went into the hospital, um first the end of the year. What day was it? The twenty seventh. That was the same day mom went in the hospital yeah. because it was in the middle of the night. Yeah. Two in the morning. Yeah. On the 27th. The 27th, um, my cat was attacked by a dog and took off and I, and I didn't see him for a few days. So he came back and, um, that's where I spent New Year's Eve is at the animal hospital because he showed up, you know, later with a deep wound to his right inner hind leg and um actually he came back on the 30th december 30th and i called that night and i actually called them and they're like well email us a picture 
and we'll kind of triage that way. And um, she said just to bring them in in the morning because mm. they had a lot of emergencies go on. Anyway, yeah. so that's where I spent uh, New Year's Eve. Um, that same week, my husband and I kind of, um, things that have been building up for a very long time came to a head. And he left. And he hasn't come back. So, um, he didn't want to be found. He wasn't just angry at me for trying to break up, but he was angry at everyone. Which, I didn't understand why he would be angry with his siblings and his brothers and all that, and his children. But anyway... So, um, he, I, I don't know, I guess he abandoned us, you know, he just he freaking, did. he bounced. He did. And, um, honestly, that was my biggest fear. You know, our dad didn't really want daughters and. He didn't want kids at all, really. Well, yeah, but especially girls. Yeah. <laughs> he may have made an exception for a boy, but anyway. Yeah. So, I have balls, but I don't have a dick. Sorry, Dad. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, too. Because I really would like one. I would like a lot of you. I have a couple in a drawer. Does that count? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't think so. Anyway, so, you know, I've been with this man for 30 years since I was 15 years old. And um, so, it hurts like an MF. And that's my year, or that's my word for the year, by the way. mf -er. mf -er. Mm. Yeah. Like, I just say it constantly because it's so appropriate. Like, right. everything that's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our kids are very hurt and confused. And um, we're going to have to make some life changes here in the next few months and probably move out of the house we're renting. And... Uh, figure out living situations and all the good stuff, you know, like I'm restarting at 46. Like this is like freaking awesome. You're going to be okay. <laughs> I, I know I will because, because I've been learning a lot about my attachment style. I've been learning about codependency. I've been learning about my tendencies. Um, how I seek value from others in my actions, you know, mm -hmm. by doing for others. And, um, you know, it's been eye opening. Like when you sent me a podcast, uh, called, um, we can do hard things mm -hmm. and it wasn't the specific episode you sent me, but when you sent it to me, I looked at the the show and all the different, um, yeah. available episodes. And I saw one about codependency and I listened to that and the way it was explained was unlike any other way I've heard it said. And it just resonated with me so much. And it's, um, when you're codependent, you want to change others' perception of life. Mm -hmm. That just blew me away. It's about control. Me trying to control what other people experience in their life. So say, Chris, you came to me and you were like venting, right? About mm -hmm. an issue or a problem. Instead of me listening and going, dang, I'm sorry you're going through that. I would go... Well, have you tried this? Or have right. you thought about that? Or have you done this? And it's, it doesn't come from a place of superiority, but maybe it does because I'm thinking, well, maybe she hasn't thought of it this way or tried it that way. But you also didn't ask me for my advice. Right. You didn't, it's unsolicited advice that I'm kind of pushing on you. I mean, it comes from a good place because I love you and I want the best for you, but also it's very intrusive. Right. You know, it's like, and you know, that is something my husband would say. Can't, can't you just listen? 
Mm -hmm. Because when you, when you do that to someone, you're kind of insinuating that you didn't think of all the things right Right. to do and, and you can't handle it on your, on your own, you know? And, uh, you know, with the audio books I've downloaded, you know, about narcissism and codependency and how they're a match made in heaven because narcissists are very, um, distant and my, um, my attachment style is anxious attachment style. So I need constant reinsurance Mm -hmm. and if I love you and I see you taking a step backwards, it panics me. Yeah. And then I go all in like, oh, what can I do? What, what's going on? What's wrong? What, what did I do? What did I say? Like, you yeah. know, and, and then they take another step back because it's fucking too much. Right. Which I don't, you know, but especially I believe my husband has um, the attachment style called um, withdrawn. Mm-hmm. Because... You can only get so close to him before he takes a step backwards. Yeah. Because I think it's too scary. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that just makes me step forward more. Right. You know? Or start to let go. And, you know, I can't tell you how many times in the past few weeks where I've where I've even said to him, like, you don't care about me. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't care about me. You know, and that's what I was feeling and that's what I was seeing. And not all of this is just like happening now. It's been a buildup of things over year, over the years. Mm-hmm. But I just, I just realized that I deserve better and I'm not, I'm not putting up with it anymore. Good. You shouldn't. And this is just how long it took me, but that's fine, you know, because I was ready now, you know, I was ready, I was ready to throw in the towel because if it, if any, if I've learned anything, it's that you cannot change people, right? Like Mel Robbins says, if they can, they will. Absolutely. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I believe he loved me and our children to the best of his ability. Right. But it isn't enough. No. Because I want that genuine love. I want the love that I actually kind of never really believed was real. Mm-hmm. Well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> right? Good luck with that. Not, But it's not that I'm going to be seeking it because right. I am healing myself. So mm-hmm. my codependency is ending now. Like yeah. it, it's in process, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so my goal is to not be attracted to that type of person anymore. Good. That period. Right. Because, you know, the podcast, um, a podcast that I was listening to was, gosh, it was hitting home because it's like, you're attracted to your home. Like, it's like you're a child and you never grew up and moved out. Mm -hmm. And it's not even consciously. It's subconsciously because even if it's unhealthy, it was still home. Mm -hmm. It was still what we're used to. It's what you're comfortable with. Yeah. And a healthy person, a lot of people say they're boring because they're healthy because they don't need drama in their life i had a huge adjustment with jason because he's actually the most healthy person um and granted he's almost 50 you know not saying he was always healthy or that he always did things right but i think he's learned along the way and we're just very much respectful of each other's boundaries we're respectful of each other's time um we I think that we communicate well, that if there's an issue, we can talk about it. We never mm-hmm. fight. Mm-hmm. Um, he accepts me for who I am. I accept him. I don't try to change him. Yeah. And that's all very young, immature behavior. Right. Um, but I also, I'm a, I, you know, it takes you to get older if you're not a healthy person. Like we were not healthy, um, emotionally healthy. Mm-hmm. And so, um, oh, wow. 
I just lost what my whole point was. <laughs> That's old of me. Well, um, how how you had to go through a big adjustment with him because you were so used to the vault, vault volatile. Yes. Yeah. And there were times, and even like in the beginning, but then there have been times throughout our, we have been together almost six years where there's points where I feel like I'm bored. I feel bored, you know, but then I have to check myself, honestly, like, no, it's you. You get up and do something. It's not your relationship because right. you guys are fine. Right. You know, it's, you're bored within yourself. You need to go hike or you need to do this. You challenge need to read, yourself. Challenge myself. Yeah. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, and there's way, there are things that we need to work on. I'm not saying there isn't. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I love about him is that when my life is so chaotic with my kids, my grandkids, my mom, you know, whatever, He's there to support me, but he yeah. doesn't add anything on my plate. You know, I don't have to feel bad that I'm not here or feel bad that I'm asking him to help me with certain things, the dogs, the yard, whatever. Yeah. And I appreciate that. And there's times like this where I'm just like so thankful that he is the one in my life because he gets it and he doesn't add anything extra on my Yeah, because someone else would be like, well, when are we going to have time? Right. Where where are you? Like like, but, like yeah. more, even more pressure and guilt. Like, fuck, Absolutely. there's another thing I'm not doing. Yeah, you know? I don't have to do that. You yeah. know, I just say, hey, I'm finally home. And he'll come out, you know, and we'll and you'll visit. give him the mm -hmm. update on mom and get mm -hmm. his update on work. And, you know, and then it's like, okay, check in tomorrow. And right. then maybe not, maybe it'll be the next day and it's okay. Yeah. You know, so, and I, you know, and I'll still feel guilty. Like, I'm sorry about the, and he'll be like, stop. That's what I'm here for. You know? Yeah. And that's something I've never had. Right. And I was so crazy, Kel, because the other night, um, my oldest daughter and I, we were at the hospital with mom and we took a break, went to dinner and we were talking and she's going through a lot of changes and learning about herself and her childhood and, you know, things. And, you had made a comment the last time you were here when we were all together and you made the comment of whenever our stepdad would come home, we would have to jump up and make sure every, but how did, how did you say it? You well, said, I, I mean, the way I remember it is if we came out into, we would come out into the living room when he was gone. And we, I would have, I would always remember what channel it was on when we first turned on the TV, because as soon as we hear his van coming down the street, I would put it back on that channel, turn off the TV, and I Hold would, we would get, yeah, we would pick up like we were, we're never, never there. there, yeah, and we would literally run to our room. But you said walking on eggshells. I think oh, that's the term oh, you said for our childhood. Yeah. yeah, but I never saw it that way. That's okay. what's so I crazy. Did. Is yeah. that I do remember those exact same things. You're right. Okay. I I don't think that it hit me as strongly. As it did you, because mm -hmm. he and I always bat butted heads anyway. Mm -hmm. I butted heads with everyone. That's how I was with mm -hmm. everybody in the house. But but that didn't scare you. You it were okay with me. confrontation. You were okay because with I was that. an angry person. I was a very well, angry child. Yeah. Well, I was just avoidant. But my whole point <laughs> is, my relationship that I got in and got married, mm. I lived in that eggshell. Eighteen years walking on eggshells. Always wondering, okay, try to make everything perfect before he got home because who knows what he'd blow up about. It never resonated with me until you said that last week. And wow. I was telling her at dinner the other night, I go, why did I never put that together? Wow. That I was comfortable. And why I lived like that for 18 years was because I grew up that way and I didn't even realize it. 100, yep. Didn't even realize it. Yep. How insane is that? That we live because in it, a was but, it was our normal. It was our normal. But I always said I grew up in a great childhood. My mom and dad never fought. They never fought. You have to listen to this podcast because I have. This, I've started. That woman said the same thing. She, you know what she said? She said I had a great childhood. I was the broken one. Right. That's not true. Right. And that's how I feel. I was. I was. You damaged. were the problem. I was damaged because yeah. dad left at three. I was angry. I was molested. I was damaged. But I never, ever thought that our childhood contributed to any of it. Really? No. Never. You know, 70... So we become hardwired over time, right? Yeah, zero to seven, they say, is like the biggest Well, this woman influence. said, when we're born, okay, coming out of the womb, yeah. we're 25% hardwired genetically. Okay. By three years old, we are 75% hardwired. 
wired. That's now sad. this doesn't mean that we can't rewire ourselves because right. the brain is rewiring all the time. We can right. learn, you know, we learn new behaviors. We, we make changes in our lives and we rewire, right? But that's how pre-wired we are. And then we grow up in a house like that. So there, you know, the other 25% to finish us off is all within, you know, that short, right. The short few years after that. We that were talking blows about... my mind. Anyway, we're pre-wired and then, yeah, like that was our house. And, and so it's funny that you say that. So you had a marriage where it was on, you were on eggshells, but you kind of didn't realize it because it was your normal, right? Growing up. I, I realized it, but I wasn't uncomfortable with it because it's how I grew up. Right. But, uh, the abuse is where I had the problem. Oh, well, you know, well, <laughs> that's good at least. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I right? wasn't beaten as a child. Yeah. You know? Um, well, so I, because of that walking on eggshells growing up, I think that's kind of, that's where my anxiety came from, mm -hmm. kind of, like it flourished okay. because you're always wondering what's going to happen. And you're always wanting you're, to make it good yeah, for everybody and else. Why, why else wouldn't I be a codependent? Right. If I make everything perfect, yeah. you're not going to yell at me. Right. If I have good grades, right. because it seemed like growing up, the attention we got was negative attention. Uh -huh. But if you were good, then you just... Went to the wayside, you know, back then it was children are meant to be seen, seen not, not heard. To, not heard. Yeah. So don't, don't, um, speak and let, or don't speak unless spoken to. Mm -hmm. What the f No wonder why I want, no wonder why I think to myself, why should I say my opinion? Why would anyone care right. what I think? That's still in me today. Yeah. I've gotten way better through yes. us and our channel yes. and the feedback we get. And it doesn't mean you have to agree with me, right. but it means I have a voice and it has value. Right. And I'm learning that and it just makes a lot of sense. So in my marriage, you know, I, I refuse the eggshell thing. Like I would have talks about my to my husband, like, you know, if he would come home from work in a bad mood and I would say, cause I feel it right away. I feel yeah. that you feel the energy drop in the room. Right. I look at my kids. I know they're feeling it because right. I feel like my kids are very, um, em empathic in a way like, yeah. the, you they know, energy, the, the feelings of others, or at least feel it or at least recognize right. it. And, um, I've had many talks with him. Be responsible for the energy you bring into a space. Right. Because absolutely. when you bake a cake, if you add one extra egg, the whole thing's fucked off. Right. Like, mm -hmm. not saying one person can fuck everything off, but it changes the dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. and it changes the dynamics. Right. So I, and he did seem to hear me back then, you know. It's like, if, like... Some people need to decompress for 10 minutes yeah. after work. Go to the room, take a shower, yeah. throw on sports center. I don't care. Right. But if that's what you need to not have that energy yes. here, whatever. Just like know that about yourself. Or like I'm not super talkative in the morning. I'm very mm -hmm. quiet in the morning. It's just my nature. I'm not mad. I'm not anything. It's just you need time. how I wind up, right. you know? So... Getting back to my point, I didn't want a marriage or a household walking on eggshells, but in order to avoid it, I did everything I could to avoid it by appeasing and codependency and if everything is okay, then he won't get mad. Just like in it, growing up, if everything's good, if I do everything right, then he won't be mad. Right. Just like Rich. Right. Or stepdad. Right. Right. But what I'm realizing through this healing process is I experienced a lot of neglect in my marriage. Mm. Because... In the few times where I really got that attention or affection, it recharged me to stay through it. 
It recharged me to stay. Like, oh, this is why, like, these are the times that I live for. These are yeah. the times that I work hard for. Right. And it refills you just enough to believe that you can get it again. Right. It's, it's like something being dangled in front of your face and you allowed one bite every so often. Yeah. You know, it's that starving yes. child and, or whatever and that you get fed once yes. every so many weeks. And then you're like, yes, you're and right there. there. Yes. You're like here for it. You know? Um, and one of the ladies on the podcast said your brain, because there's fundamental needs that we all have, mm -hmm. you know, love, safety, to be seen, mm -hmm. to be heard, and to be celebrated. We mm -hmm. all need that. And if you don't get those things, your brain actually acts like you're starving because mm -hmm. you're starving for something emotional right. that you need. So you are starving. And mm -hmm. and um, going through this, yeah, I just realized that um, I was neglected quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. And... That just fed my codependency. That fed my uh, attachment style because I don't feel secure. Mm -hmm. If I don't feel secure in my relationship, I'm gonna want reassurance, you know? Right. So I bring this to you guys not to, you know, like, um, talk shit about my husband and you know I still love him you know that shit doesn't just go away overnight I, you know that would be convenient if it did I, I I love who I thought he was I love the good times we had and I love the hell out of our kids I mean they're the best thing that ever happened to me so I just I guess I want you guys to be a part of my healing process um, so, you know, I don't want to hide anything, you know, and, um, maybe I'll help someone else. Shit. Yeah. And maybe others will have good advice for me. I have a question for people who have been through a divorce or a really hard breakup or, you know, long-term, you know, relationship is what did you want to replace right away? What did you have to get out of your house or never use again because when when this first happened I kind of freaked out and I was like oh my god this is the first shower I'm ever taking oh my god this is the first dump I'm taking this, <laughs> you know what? this is the first time I'm yeah. eating and he's not here this is like but right. that shows you how much my world revolved right. around him right because I can't take a shit Without thinking, oh, this is the first shit I'm taking. I know he's not coming home while I'm doing this. Well, not even, not, not even no, that. But, but everything is so a changed. first now. Right. Because there's a, not just a line drawn in this sand, but a freaking brick wall. Yeah. You know? Right. And it's like, everything is new. This is my first shower. This is, you know, it's fucking ridiculous how I was like spazzing for a minute. And then I was like, fuck that. I can't think that way. Right. You know, I... It shows how deep, how deep I really was in making everything about him, Absolutely. you know, so. Um, I think we should do a part two. Yeah. So, uh, because we're, it's we're, almost We're hitting minutes. our time limit. So, yeah, so let's tell a joke and then we'll continue on another okay. episode. All right. Go ahead and do your uh, the jokes we mm -hmm. have this submitted. This is Genova. Okay, here's some dad jokes. These are ones I found. <laughs> oh, so we don't have any more submitted by people? No, not from that. Not people like we had twelve comments on but that no video, jokes. Okay. but two, but actually three jokes. But anyway, I want to do these two. Okay. Why did the chicken go to the gym? You wanted to get pecs. Yes, to work on his pecs. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> and this one isn't a question. It's just a joke. My wife's mad at me because she said I never buy her flowers. Honestly, I didn't even know she sold flowers. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, I love that one. Shoot. So 
go buy yourself some flowers. That's I'm going right. to. And Miley Cyrus's new song. We'll talk more next next episode. <laughs> Don't miss it. We have a lot more to discuss. Yeah. Thanks for watching, crafters. Bye. <laughs>